regarding Christ in the city of Redwood City. Long time superintendent and brother in Christ. Prepare your hearts for the word of God as Superintendent E. J. O'Neill comes at this time. Raise your right hands and say amen.
with reference to teenagers and teenage suicide, that there was a poll of approximately 500 teenagers. The question was asked, have you ever entertained the thought of self-destruction? Amazingly and astonishingly, the true, 73% gave a positive response. You didn't hear me. Oh my God. Maybe they didn't, but they had entertained the thought. Just in the city of Redwood City, less than a month ago, less than two blocks from the church where I am pastoring, there were two young girls in the same family that made an attempt to suit to or self-destruction. It tells me, darlings, that somewhere along the line, somebody needs to tell the story. Loneliness is a dreadful disease. Mr. Robert Wise, a social psychologist, cites loneliness in two phases, and he puts it in two major categories. That is emotional and social. Some of the symptoms of psychological loneliness is loss of appetite, inability to sleep, the feeling of tension and stress, while social loneliness gives the victim the feeling of detachment from the family or close associates, a feeling of no involvement in the present matters, and that awful feeling that nobody cares. I know tonight there are those who are dressed and looking beautiful and you are feeling very comfortable now while you're here. But when the service is closed and it's over, many of you will have to go on alone. Face that awful tragedy and that awful emotional stress of loneliness. All right. Yet, in spite of the state of the category of your loneliness, whether it be social or psychological, it is consoling to know that someone cares when things go wrong. And in spite of it all, we can tell our neighbor that thank God, thank God, I'm not alone. You see, this text was taken from a narrative as narrated by the Apostle Matthew who walked and talked with Jesus as he relates some of the things that Jesus stated to a waiting congregation or to a group of people and specifically to his called disciples on the last day that he spent physically here on earth. You see, he had ministered three years and six months to a dying world. He had opened the eyes of the blind, and he healed the sick, and he had strengthened the feeble knees, and he had given consolation to those who felt as though they were all alone. And finally, he did what he came to earth to do, and that is to die on the cross of Calvary. That his life and his blood may be shed for the ransom of many. But having risen from the dead, Jesus showed himself 40 days in many areas and with, uh, among a number of people. And a number of people saw him in the glorified state. Jesus did not need to use a key to go into a locked door. He just willed to go and he was there. And uh, after showing himself in this manner for 40 days, he stood on the mountain, having called his disciples to him, and said to them these words, Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. And he said, Lo, I'll be with you always, even unto the end of the world. 
giving them the assurance who in terms have written and left it on record for you and I and that we can say in our hearts I thank God help me say thank God I'm not alone you see, you see, there are those who have faced loneliness before. They have not had the opportunity to experience what you and I have experienced. And that is the power and the gift of the Holy Ghost. I can see Joe on one occasion when he had uh, encountered, someone said, the bodily affliction. Who had once stood at the top of the mark with uh, an economic status. But seeing that everything that he had was gone, it seemed that even all of his friends had misunderstood him. His wife didn't understand him anymore and was about to turn her back on him. But Job had to reach up and console himself. And he said, there's one thing I know for certain. He said, I know my witness is in heaven and my record is on him. In other words, I'm not alone. Find that David in his era had experienced this loneliness. There was a time when David had was confronted with a bear. No doubt David felt that he was there all alone. But somewhere out of nowhere it seemed that God gave him whatever was needed and saved him from the clutches of the bear. There was another time when a lion came before David. And David no doubt wondered, well what am I going to do out here when I'm alone? And it seemed that in the nick of time, God seemed to lump the lion's jaw and gave David victory over the lion. And David looked back one day as he was going, uh, running from uh, Absalom, trying to preserve his life, not wanting to kill his son of whom he greatly loved. And it seemed to me that he got into a predicament where he felt that he was all alone. It seemed that even the strongest men of the kingdom had all turned their back on him. But you see, darling, when it seems that when you're all alone, there are times in life when you have to console yourself. And so David began to encourage himself. And the Bible said that David began to write on one occasion as he began to face those lonely moments. He began to look back to the school of time. And he said, God delivered me from the bed. And God delivered me from the heart of the life. He said, if God has brought me thus far. He said, even though I now walk through the valley, through the shadow of death, I will hear no evil.
for California Northwest. And many of you may not know, but the assistant treasurer for the National Church of God in Christ. But on tonight, he sheds himself of all of those titles and roles and becomes simply a gospel preacher. And we're waiting to hear what the Lord has given him. I want you to receive expectantly and gladly now, Superintendent Ernest J. O'Neill, the messenger of the hour. Come on, let's see. Come on, let's see. Sister Little Flower. 